This AI model right here, DeepSeek V3, is a new Chinese AI model that's been released to America and it wiped out $1 trillion of market cap. 589 billion of that was from Nvidia because OpenAI has made everyone believe that you need these really powerful chips and you need to put a lot of money into data centers and all of this to build a very powerful AI like ChatGPT, which has been the leader in the West. But now, China China or this hedge fund in China who was working on an AI model as a side project and who claims they trained this model with less than $5.6 million has released a model that rivals ChatGPT 4.0 in many regards. And some say is even on par with 01. And they have a benchmark of several different tests on their website that you can look at that show DeepSeek V3, DeepSeek 2.5, Quinn 2.5, Llama 3.1. Uh, Meta is getting ready to release Llama 4, but I, I've heard that they, they've scrapped Llama 4 and they're actually just copying DeepSeek and they're just gonna go from there. Claw 3.5 and GPT 4.0. And if you look at this chart, just a very brief glance, you're going to see that DeepSeek V3 is beating out a lot of these other models, like hands down. And I know that a lot of people are gonna be thinking, well, of course they're gonna say that they're beating all of these other models out. But the thing about DeepSeek V3 is that it's open source meaning you can look at the code. They're not hiding it. Now, to my knowledge, they are not telling people how they train this model, but you can look at the code. And not only can you look at the code, you can download it to your local machine and actually run it because it doesn't require a lot of power. You don't need these super powerful NVIDIA chips that everyone thought that you needed to actually have a smart and powerful AI. So aside from everything that is actually done to the US stock market, there's a, a peak element elephant in the room that I actually want to discuss and that I want to talk about. Just a few weeks ago, TikTok was banned. It went dark. You couldn't log into the app. They turned off the servers, right? And then President Trump came in the office and, you know, he let them know that they were going to work on something. And so the lights came back on. Everyone started posting their TikTok shop videos again. The TikTok algorithm changed. Things were different, but people themselves went back to TikTok and as usual. People went back to dancing and lip syncing and doing all types of things on TikTok, just being creative, not realizing that the ban is still in place and that President Trump only signed a 75 day extension to work out a deal where they sold half of the company to the US or he brokered some deal for a private buyer. Either way it goes, it's still on the chopping block. It's still officially banned. You cannot download the app in the Apple App Store. And all of that excitement about organizing and mobilizing to try to get this ban overturned is gone. You don't hear about it anymore. Now, Senator Rokahana and Senator Rand Paul are supposedly introducing a bill to overturn that particular portion of the law, but you don't hear anybody talking about it anymore. And so what's probably going to happen is that if TikTok remains true to what they said, that they aren't going to sell the platform, then it's probably gonna go away. Then what's most likely going to happen is that the ban is going to go into place 60 days from now and TikTok is gonna go away. And that's the pink elephant in the room because the reason they are banning TikTok is because they claim it's a threat to national security. I've heard people talk about propaganda and how Americans users data wasn't safe, even though it was stored on servers and tests that were owned by Oracle, an American company. The Department of Justice claimed that because TikTok was owned by ByteDance and ByteDance was a company that was under the control of the CCP, that the CCP could ask for access to Americans' data at any time and they would have to give it over. And based on my knowledge of the world and how things work in China, that's factually true. They would have to give it over. And so TikTok wanted to assuage the US government's conscience, so they placed all of our data in Dallas, Texas with Oracle. So that even if the Chinese government requested that, the US government would have time to say, Oracle, you can't do that and stop it. It was a good solution. But now we have DeepSeek, an AI model that just wiped $1 trillion from the stock market. An AI model that was so good that now everyone's rethinking how much money they should be investing in AI and if it really requires this much money. And let's not forget that this AI model comes directly from China. 
So now I want to show you something on the DeepSeek website. So due to large scale malicious attacks on DeepSeek services, registration may be busy. Please wait and try again. Register users can log in normally. Thank you for your understanding and support. People are already attacking DeepSeek and why not? They just wipe one trillion dollars out of the American stock market. I, I, I have no idea who could possibly be attacking them, but registered users can sign in as usual. So I'm going to log in with my Google account out and then I want to show you something. So we're inside deep seat and what we want to do is go to the terms of use and the privacy policy. And so there are six times that the privacy policy discusses data under the agreed conditions. You have the option to discontinue use of our services, terminate the contract with us and delete your account. However, even after the user deletes the account, we still have the right to retain certain data of the user as required by laws and regulations exercise the right stipulated in these terms for any illegal or violated behavior committed by the user during the use of the services before deletion. So even if you delete your deep seek account, they still have your data, right? As required by laws and regulations. Let's go to the next usage of it. To fulfill legal compliance requirements, DeepSeek has the right to use technical means to review the behavior and information of users using the services, including but not limited to reviewing inputs and outputs, establishing risk filtering mechanisms, and creating databases for illegal content features. And then they have about four different usages about data where they're talking about malicious things that you can't use DeepSeek for or that you shouldn't use it for. And so part of it is to justify them retaining your data even after you delete your account so they can kind of enforce the law as far as like you violating their terms of service and so forth. But now let's take a look at the privacy policy data controller. The service is provided and controlled by Hangzhou DeepSeek Artificial Intelligence Co. Limited and Beijing DeepSeek Artificial Intelligence Co. Limited with their register addresses in China we or us. If you have any questions about how we used your personal data, please contact service at deepseek.com. So the information they collect is the information you provide automatically collected information and information from other sources. So they give us more details about each of these three categories below. So the information you provide is profile information. So they collect information that you provide when you set up an account, such as your date of birth. They got your birthday, your username, your email address, your telephone number, number, password, user input. When you use our services, we may collect your text or audio input, prompt, uploaded files, feedback, chat history, or other content that you provide to our model and services. That's a lot of stuff automatically collected information, technical information. We collect certain device and network connection information when you access the service. So if you're on your laptop at home, like me, they're collecting Wi-Fi information. Kind of like messenger. I think they, some people have videos about meta messenger, picking up Wi-Fi information. I don't know if it's to the same extent, but it's collecting that information. This information includes your device model, operating system, keystroke patterns or rhythms, IP address and system language. They're not just picking up the internet or Wi-Fi. They're picking up my hardware information. They know the Mac address of my MacBook, which they can trace directly back to a very specific Mac that was created by Apple. There's no hiding who purchased the Mac that I'm on right now. They're picking up the operating system and the keystroke patterns or rhythms. This means they are tracking what I type when I type in my prompts. They're tracking how I type the pattern at which I type. They're tracking my voice inputs. Like when I do a voice input with chat GPT, they're tracking that they're saving my voice so that if the Chinese government one day requested the voice file for Corey McLean, if one day I became a very important person that they wanted to discredit and they wanted to create a file of me saying something, uh, something that's very controversial. They could just get the voice file. Hey, deep sea, you got a voice file of Corey. Yes, sir. We do. Yeah. We like to get that and they can get it and make that file advertisers measurement and other partners, your information with us about you and the actions you have taken outside of the service, such as your activities on other websites and apps or in stores, including products and services you purchase online or in person. These partners also share information with us, such as mobile identifiers for advertising, hashed email addresses and phone numbers and cookie identifiers, which we use to help match you and your actions outside of the service. So the mobile identifiers 
are a hashed kind of information, which is something that Apple has used for the longest time with Meta, which is why I never understood Apple app transparency. It was almost like they were gaslighting us because the information was always anonymous. So I'm not sure if DeepSeek is monetizing their platform by displaying advertisements. And if so, it's probably coming if they aren't doing it already. And there are some popular YouTubers who are claiming that this can't be true with deep seat because as more people start to use it, how are they actually going to pay for it? And how are they going to make money with it? Because it's open source and it's free and the API is very inexpensive. So if you have an AI app you want to build and you want to tie into their API, this is going to be the platform that people use. But it just may be that they do have plans to monetize the platform by placing ads. And if that's the case, it can function like every other social media site. It can be for free for users to use, but you show them ads in the sidebar of the platform or within the application. And that's a very valid monetization model, especially if the model is as efficient as they claim it to be. But I want you to look at the legal obligations and rights. We may access, preserve, and share the information described and what information we collect. This is all the stuff up here that we talked about with law enforcement agencies, public authorities, copyright holders, or other third parties if we have good faith belief that it is necessary to comply with applicable law, legal process, or government requests as consistent with internationally recognized standards, protect the rights, property, and safety of our users, copyright holders, Orders, so forth, so forth, so forth. I'm not going to read all of that, but basically if their government requests for the information, they have it right here in black and white that they're going to hand it over. How long do they keep your information? They keep it for as long as necessary to provide their services and for other purposes set out in this privacy policy. They don't get rid of your information at all. Anything you say and do inside of DeepSeek is going to be there. And I'm not trying to fear monger, but it's just that a lot of times we see terms and services and privacy policies and we just click agree we never stop and read it we never think is this somebody i trust or if i'm going to use deep seek then you know what let me just use it for this and i'll maybe use another model that has a different privacy policy or terms of use that i trust or that says i can delete it for more intimate conversations so that's just something to think about but where do we store your information? The personal information we collect from you may be stored on a server located outside of the country where you live. We store the information we collect in secure servers located in the People's Republic of China. Your data for DeepSeek is being stored in China. Your data for TikTok was being stored in Dallas, Texas with Oracle. But it doesn't stop there. Information relating to children under 18. Our services are not aimed at children under the age of 18. So we're not even looking for you to use DeepSeek if you're under 18. But if you are 14 or older, but under 18, you should read and agree to this privacy policy together with your parents or other guardians before using our services. We do not actively collect personal information from children under the age of, listen to the quiet part. We do not actively collect personal information from children under the age of 14. Meaning if a child is over the age of 14 and not yet 18 and they use DeepSeek, DeepSeek is going to assume that that person has sat down with their parents or legal guardians and read the terms and conditions as well as the privacy policy and they're going to collect the information of that child. And this is why the next thing they say is if we notice or receive feedback that we have collected any of their personal information without prior consent from a guardian, we will attempt to delete the information as soon as possible. If you believe that we process personal information about or collected from a child under the age of 14, please contact us at right so if you're the type of parent whose teenager has a phone and you don't check it and you're concerned about their data and so forth check their phone for deep seek read the privacy policy terms and conditions and make sure it's safe for them to use it based on how you're raising your kids based on those facts about the information they collect as well as where our data is stored it's very difficult for me to see a future where they don't end up banning deep seek especially since it's following in the same path of tiktok it's outshining the master. But the only difference between DeepSeek and TikTok is that DeepSeek is open source. TikTok's algorithm was closed. And so American tech companies couldn't benefit from it. 
Whereas right now, Meta is happily copying the code of DeepSea. I'm not sure if that's accurate yet, but that's the rumor that I'm hearing. So as long as DeepSeek is an open source platform that's providing the latest cutting edge AI capabilities, then I believe that America is going to keep it around. And I don't believe that the tech companies are going to be able to lobby and get rid of it like they did with TikTok. Because even though it's going to commoditize their AIs and open AI's $200 a month for their pro plan is going to have to come down. It doesn't make any sense for them to offer us a pro plan at $200 now that we have an open source model that's just as good for free. And so no, I don't see them banning DeepSeek immediately, but if everything about DeepSeek checks out, if American scientists are able to understand how they achieve this and replicate it and improve upon it, because it is open source, you can build on it, you can change the code. But once they get a model that can successfully replace corporate workers and other workers in different fields, that's when they'll tell Deep Seek, we don't need you anymore. And they'll say it's a national security threat. And I just can't get over the hypocrisy of it, of why it isn't banned now. Why President Trump is saying, I think it's good that we have this competition. Why didn't he say that about TikTok? And maybe he will, maybe he'll try to find a way to reverse it, I don't know. But on TikTok, I'm having an open conversation around a piece of content and people are in the comments calling stuff out and giving different opinions. So a person is less likely to be taken hold of by propaganda, misinformation, et cetera. Whereas with AI, it's an individual, private, intimate conversation, sometimes about the most intimate parts of a person's life. And we have no insight into what the AI models are actually saying on a large scale, none at all. And DeepSeek is gathering that data now. It's the number one app in the Apple App Store. Americans are downloading it. They're having conversations. And that data is China's forever. So why isn't DeepSeek banned? Because they're profiting from it right now. And when they're no longer able to profit from it, they'll probably ban that too. And some people are saying that this situation was created by America because we forbade Nvidia to sell their most powerful chips to China. And so they had to find a way to work with less to do more and they accomplished it. And so maybe America does keep them around for a little while and then they try to ban them later on. And I don't want you to think that I want them to ban Deep Seek. I don't think Deep Seek should be banned, but I also don't think that TikTok should be banned either. And just so we're clear, if we want to use it, we should be allowed to use it unless they can show us publicly where the threat to national security is. Because according to their logic, in every argument they use to ban TikTok, Deep Seat checks off those boxes a hundred times more. And so I'm not surprised that this situation backfired on them, just like the situation with banning TikTok backfired on Meta, and it's going to cause them a lot of problems long-term once that app is finally banned in two months if Donald Trump doesn't figure anything out. And I talk about all of those repercussions right here. You can understand how content consumption is going to change in two months if President Trump doesn't find a way to save the app. But thank you for watching. If you got value out of this video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Let me know if you use DeepSeek, what you think about it, what you think about the privacy policy. Do you trust them with your data, the conversations you're having and so forth. And as always, take care, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.